soldier sued me for. You understand? You 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 hear me? Yes, yes, we hear you. So anyway, the the persecuting uh, against me and again the film started in two thousand two till now. Um, perhaps uh, could you uh, tell us what the latest is on that um, on the court case? What was the last thing that happened? The last thing that happened uh, one year ago that uh, uh, the trial uh, decided, uh, the court decided, uh, the judge decided that I had to pay 250,000 shekel to the, to the surgeon who uh, sued me and uh, 200,000, around 200,000 for the, his lawyer. So I appealed uh, to the Supreme Court and uh, they after tomorrow uh, will be the final uh, uh, sitting uh, and the final decision by the, the Supreme Court, day after tomorrow. Wow, I didn't realize it was so close. Um, yeah, very close. Yeah, this is kind of we we picked the right time to talk to you, I guess. Um, yeah, well, so. we wish you uh, we wish you the best, and uh, may may the I will I I will win because if I will lose the court, I am winning, and if I will win the court, I am winning. In both cases, I am winning. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Mohammed. Um, I have. Thank you. How are you? I a long time I didn't see you. Ah, yes. You you look well, and I'm glad to see that. Um, I also you. saw you. your, your gesturing. Um, it's all I, it's all makeup. Don't don't worry. It's all makeup. <laughs> you are a filmmaker. Um, I saw your gesturing, actually, your um, nervous gesturing um, when the film ended. So I know that you're still affected by this film by seeing it. And that's beautiful. No, I am not affected by the film. I'm affected by what happened to Shireen Abu Afi, not by the film. Uh, well, it's no, nonetheless uh, interrelated. Um, yeah. I do have a um, couple of comments, a couple of questions to start this off. Um, yeah. that, um, that and, I Nancy, before, before yeah. you get started, there was, um, uh, I know a lot of this is going to come up, and uh, a lot of people are curious about the, the girl in the film. Uh, that was um, going. <laughs> what what what's her name and where is she now? And I'm sure people are gonna her want to. Name, her name is Najwa Jalamne. She lives now in Dubai and she has four children. She is a great mother. Wow. Do you yeah. think? Um, do, do you have her? Do you have contacts with her? Uh, the last time uh, uh, I had a contact with her before the last trial, and she said that she wants to come from Dubai to be a witness in the uh, in the court, and I didn't agree. I wanted her to be with her children. I didn't want to disturb her and to come for uh, for the trial because I knew that it will make her a lot of troubles and I wanted to, to save her from these kinds of troubles and persecuting by the Israelis. Yeah. Perhaps we should just not, not bother looking her up because yeah. that could cause more problems. You know, well. because her family, her family lives in Jenin and, uh, uh, and she is coming uh, once in a while to visit her family. So I wanted uh, to avoid uh, some problems that can happen to her if she will come in, she will be coming to the trial. So yes. I told her, thank you very much and don't come, please don't come. Yeah. But she was ready to come. Well, thank you. Uh, sorry, Nancy, uh, I'll, I'll yield the floor to you back. No, just um, to start off with um, for the child who was a child then, a mother now, um, that I loved the way that she, her speech literally went from steadfastness um, through um, through being vindictive um, and then to being depressed 
and then in her words, and then ending literally with the image of the tree, with nature um, ultimately overtaking what technology has destroyed. And that interaction between technology, the bulldozer that they needed this huge bulldozer to pull down one house, um, things like that. And ultimately her saying that the tree would rise above it because the Israelis could not reach the top of the tree. Just the illusion yeah. was so beautiful. And I, I thank you for that. Um, that it, I thought while I was watching it that unfortunately, very unfortunately, this film is no longer a history. Um, it's contemporary, it's issues, it's words are contemporary in the light of what just happened and what continues happening. Um, and therefore, I wonder one thing that um, the 72 year old, um, about a quarter way into the film um, said, what is your, what good is your filming? And I pose that question to you. What good is your filming? Is anyone's filming? Is anyone's press? Um, as far as the situation goes? <laughs> you know, there is a saying in Arabic, Allah is smash in a which means never mind if you believe or not believe, uh, or not if you are a believer or not a believer in God. I believe in God. But anyway, this is a saying that says that you must tell your story because God doesn't uh, listen, I mean, doesn't, doesn't hear if you are silent, which means everybody, everyone, every human being in this world must have his narrative, must have his story to tell the world because if there is injustice happening to him or to, to the, uh, uh, the, the place he, he is living in, he must tell that. He must tell. Uh, you know, I, I, I watched a film many years ago, or maybe it's not a film, maybe I hear the story, so I am a little bit, uh, my memory is not the, the best, you know. I have something early uh, Alzheimer's, I think. Anyway, so uh, there was a story about a man who is living in a, in a place where the sun is not rising and they have no water, they have no sun, they have, they have nothing, very poor uh, quarter, quarter uh, neighborhood. So God told the people there who were complaining all the way, look, I cannot hear you, all of you are shouting together. Send somebody to tell me what's the problem, which problem you have. So they sent some representative from their uh, quarter, from na neighborhood, uh, to God to, to, to tell him uh, the problem that they faced. And while he was flying in the sky, he saw the stars, he saw the moon, he saw the Mars, he saw all these wonderful colors of the uh, cosmos. And when he get there, when he get, when he arrived to God, to tell the story, he forgot why he came for, what, what he came for. So God told him, okay, what's going on? Who are you? What do you want? He said, I forgot. Can I go back to the land, to the earth, and ask my people what they want? Which means you must never forget the story of your people. You must tell the story of your people. Otherwise, you are a partner of the injustice that's happening. You are a partner of the oppressors of your people. You must tell your story. That's the reason I told my story. Thank you so much. Um, so I have a number of questions um, and comments on the film um, that, um, <clears throat> sorry, Lynn Huber um, writes quite eloqu eloquently I knew Janine had happened, but this film is an astonishing wake up call, even to folks who thought they were awake. And from a more distant camera perspective, 2000 years. Yes. Sorry, I didn't hear the last sentence. Okay, from Lynn Huber, 
actually very eloquently wrote um, in the comments. I knew Janine had happened, but this film is an astonishing wake up call, even to folks who thought they were awake. And from a more distant camera perspective, 2000 years of persecution of Jews primarily in Europe takes root and flourishes into identical to ghastly inhumanity from the former victims. When and how will we recognize that it's all of us or none? And with what we have done to our mother, the earth, I fear that she will wipe us out using the weapons we have given her through destruction of the climate. I so hope we can turn around, but I'm losing hope. Again, I ask you to comment, Mohammed, on the worldwide implications of what you're of what you've portrayed in the film. Uh, I must tell. Uh you and everybody that I will never lose my hope. I will continue hoping. I'm optimistic by choice. I believe that many Israelis don't know the truth, like many Americans who didn't know what's going on in Vietnam before. And later on, they found out what's really happening after, after many years. I, I believe that the same thing will happen in Israel. I believe that the Israeli one day they will wake up and they will understand that what they have done to the Palestinian is not fair. I believe that uh, the ignorance and the fear uh, in Israel is uh, large very big and they are manipulated by their government and by their media and uh, i hope that what happened yesterday and day before to shireen abu akli and her murder and what happened in the funeral the the the, 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 the ugliness and the brutality of the israeli police who tried to 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 stop the funeral and to take the, how do you say, the uh, taboot? The coffin. The coffin. The casket. Yes. The casket or the yes. coffin. And, uh, yes, the, the, the brutality and the violence that they use uh, against the people who were participating in this national sadness, or, or let's say, uh, human sadness of the, you know, the, the people were so sad and they wanted to tell that by participating in this great, huge funeral. It shows everything, you know, it shows, it, it shows the, the reality and the ugliness of the occupation phase. And, and I believe that one day they will wake up and they will understand that uh, it cannot cannot be it, it cannot be it cannot continue, and that's the reason why I did the uh, Janine Janine in order to tell the Israeli people, especially the Israeli people, that we cannot stand it anymore. Nobody can stand it anymore, and they must help us to stop it, to stop the occupation, to 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 do uh, to make. Uh, I, a political solution between Palestinians and Israelis. Two states, two states, one beside the other. But they can, it's impossible to make two states while the occupation is still there. Impossible to make peace with occupation. We must, they must stop the occupation, not me. They occupied me, not, not the contrary. I mean, they must do something. They must move their asses and to do something. Otherwise, it will be too late. That's the reason I'm not losing my hope. I am trying to change. I'm trying to, I have a dream to change. And they will not, I mean, they, they cannot stop my dream. They can arrest me, they can persecute me, but they cannot stop my dream. And I think that life without dream is meaningless. We must have a dream. We must have a hope in order to change. 
And that's what I'm doing. And that's what Shirin Abu Akri tried to do for 20, more than 20 years. So I hope that this shock, what happened yesterday and day before, will make some influence on the Israeli uh, uh, people uh, and on the international community also to, to stop uh, supporting this spoiled boy, which is called Israel. Um, Lynn Siegel, um, no, I'm sorry, Naomi Jr. Um, does comment, and I do want to say her comments. <laughs> says, sorry, Jews should read Zionists because there are many Jews who are totally anti-Zionist. Um, not think... many, there are some, there are not many. I hope there were many, there, there are some. As far as I know, among young people, especially in the US and in Europe, times are changing and there are many, many Jews and atheists and young people worldwide who are quite anti-Zionist and pro-Palestinian. Inshallah, I hope so. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Th that said, um, as a filmmaker, turning the table a little um, away from the content of the film toward um, the filmmaking um, aspect of it. So it seems that in your film and in a number of others, you've emphasized and you should emphasize that technology has been employed to kill people, to destroy their home, their land, what they live on, um, all their crops and everything else. And yet the latest Shireen, okay, was allegedly um, what I've read in the news is that she was shot in the face. And one thing that occurs to me is that the person who had the gun had to see her in his sight in order to do that and register that this was a human being that he was shooting at. This wasn't technology that was taking her down. It was someone who saw her. And I wonder as a filmmaker, if you can treat that subject as far as who you see, who you listen to, what you see as far as human beings rather than the technology recording. I misunderstood the question. <laughs> it was basically, um, how do you make sure that you see the person that you are interviewing, that you're listening to, that you're looking at, rather than the technology that's recording what they said and also that's destroyed what they believed in? فيصل ساعدني انا مش فاهم السؤال هي يعني بتسالك انت لما تكون بتصور في شخص كيف يعني انت بتفكر بالتكنولوجيا يعني بطريقه التصوير والكاميرا هل ولا بتفكر بالشخص نفسه لما تكون تصور فيه <تصفيق> Never, never think about technology. Never. I never think about technology because I don't consider myself a director also. I am an actor. When I speak with people, I speak with them with all my senses, with my heart, with my mind, with my eyes, with my ears. I feel him. I give him the, 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 the love and the respect that make him sure I'm not afraid to tell what he really feels. That's what I'm doing. I am not thinking about technology. I don't care about technology. I really don't care. I, I care about the human being feeling, the human being story. Uh, not the technology. The technology is, uh, is important, but uh, it's not uh, I How do you say? Um, uh, I'm not ready to 
um, give up my prior my fundamentals or my beliefs. يعني مش من سلم أولوياتي يعني it's not the most important thing for me. Uh, the, the the camera or the the technical uh, uh, effects and all that. What what's important for me is to show the faith and the, the heart and the mind of the people that I interview. I give him the stage and the, the confidence not to be afraid and to tell me exactly what they feel. And that's what I did in Janine Janine and all my friends, the same thing. At least uh, it must be also technically, it must be good, it must be perfect. But first of all, I think about uh, the human being. I think about uh, him or her and uh, give her the spiritual, you know, hug and respect. And then they lose their fear and they forget about the camera. That's what I do. Yes, and then um, George Snow, a fellow filmmaker, asks what advice you might have for someone who's going to be cycling in Palestine within the coming weeks. Don't put press on your shirt. <laughs> right. <laughs> I think uh, uh, Palestine is not different from any place in the world. I think you can feel safe in Ramallah and uh, in Gaza and in uh, the West Bank more than in New York and in some other places. I believe that uh, if you are not threatening men, uh, them, if you are not uh, threatening on them, if you are coming uh, to visit and to to, to, to listen to the people, you will be most welcome. But if you, <laughs> if you wearing uh, like uh, uh, something uh, which is symbol symbolizing the occupation or the, the Israeli, you will not safe, you will not be safe. For sure, you will not be safe. But if you are, uh, coming from outside, from abroad, and you try to to just to visit the place and to listen to the people, I believe that you will you will be safe, and you you will find many open houses and hearts and minds to 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 have you and to to be their best guest. That's what I think. Uh, he he's uh, going to be carrying one of the most. Um... Uh, serious weapons with him. He's going to be uh, carrying a camera. Right. Uh, yeah. He's going to have a so, camera on his I, helmet. I think that the, that the people in Palestine uh, feel safe when they see camera because they know that uh, when the camera is there, um, perhaps, perhaps uh, the occupation will not have, will not dare to help them will not there, which is uh, not always right, as we saw with the yesterday. Uh, that didn't work game. yesterday. Yeah, it didn't work yesterday, and it didn't work with uh, Rachel Khuri, mm -mm. by who, who was killed by the, the Israeli army by, by by the tank. It didn't work then. Also, it cannot work. Peace cannot come with tank. Peace can come with flowers. Mm -hmm. um, Randy de Guilhem, um says, Shireen's murder must be publicized in the US for what it is, the murder of a Palestinian woman who was murdered while reporting Israeli aggression. I'm um, very, honored and proud to tell you that among others, the National Press Club in Washington, which represents um, inordinate numbers of press across the US and the world, 
um, is publicizing very much, is having seminars, is issuing statements um, about Shireen's murder and um, has planned um, all kinds of questioning. I don't know quite what will come of it, but I know that they were actively objecting to it as well as murders of other journalists across the world. Um, their immediate past president is um, someone from Al Jazeera, which um, Shireen, of course, represented. Um, so uh, the wheels are turning, I think, worldwide. And um, I hate to say that, that there's any good in Shireen's murder, but if there is, she seems to have started those wheels rolling. Mm -hmm. I think... I think that Mr. Biden must answer the questions that Shirin Abu Akli would ask him if she was alive, when he will come here. She will ask him about the Palestinian state beside Israel, what he has done for that. She will ask him about the settlements in the West Bank which is still there. She will ask him about the right of return of the Palestinians who are forbidden to come back home. She will ask him some basic questions about the 5,000 prisoners in the Israeli prison, that some of them are more than 25, 30 years in the prison. She will ask him all these questions and he will never, could never answer these questions because he must say to Israel loudly, stop the occupation and let's have a Palestinian state beside Israel on the land which was occupied in 1967. That's what he must do. That the president of the world, the most, the stronger man in the world must do, and he still didn't do. He must say that. Since he didn't say that loudly, he didn't do his job. He didn't do his, he didn't do his duty, because if Mr. Biden pretended that he is the ruler, the president of the open and the free world, America. Yalla, let's see, let's see it. Let's see it really, really happening. Not just wars, wars, wars. I mean, the Israeli audience, the Israeli community and the international community must work together to stop the occupation and to change this government, this extreme government. We are living in, uh, under the, the extreme government more than 30 years. Since Mr. Uh, 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 before Mr. Rabin was murdered, since the, the the Likud, the extremists, came to, to rule Israel. Since 1977, I think it was, it happened. So since that time until today, the Israeli government are, you know, like they have a competition between them who hate Arabs more, who hate Palestinians more, in order to be uh, a prime minister. So, first of all, they must change the government. They must, we must have uh, not extremist government and to have the ability to sit down with the Palestinians and to negotiate about uh, a political solution. The political solution can't be with occupation. Cannot be impossible. You cannot eat the apple and leave it, uh, you know, like uh, <laughs> complete. Um, For, I, in order to make peace, we must 
make compromises. The compromise that the Palestinians made is a very big. They don't think about the whole Palestine. They are satisfied with a small Palestine beside Israel. The Israelis don't want that. The Israelis still occupying the land. They, start, they try to occupy Jerusalem, the old Jerusalem, Al-Aqsa. And if somebody is resisting, he is a terrorist. They consider him terrorist. I am terrorist, Muhammad Bakri. I am, in their eyes, I am terrorist. Which I, all my life, I work for peace and for coexistence between Palestinians and Israelis. And my work show that all my life. And they consider me a terrorist now. They say that Jenin Jenin is a science fiction. They don't want to listen. So that's the reason I, I used the Duff Man in the film. The opening of the film was the Duff Man, because the world is Duff. So I'm speaking his language. We want peace. We want to live in peace. We are exhausted. People are exhausted of, of, of death and of separation and of occupation and discrimination. We are fed up with that. Enough. Stop it. Let's live in peace. You know, some Palestinians, some, some many, many Palestinians didn't see the sea for more than 30 years. The sea. They see the sky, but they don't see the sea. The sky is much farther than the sea from them. Mm -hmm. The sea is for everybody. The land is for everybody. Jerusalem is for everybody. Unbelievable. It's the last, of, as the, our man say in the film, it's the last occupation in the world. Ah. Uh, I, I, I'm tired to, to repeat myself. Really? What next? What's going to be? What they want? Um, Mohammed, in answer to what's next, um, what's next apparently is the world reacting. Um, I have a number of posts um, on the feed right now that says there's a big knock march in Bay Ridge, Brooklyn um, in the US tomorrow, um, that um, there's a justice for Shireen and Nakba commemoration protest at the Lincoln Memorial in Washington DC at 1.30 PM tomorrow. There are various calls for the world court to investigate um, the Palestine Museum US um, using its social media and website will keep account of all the various protests and calls for justice around the world and let you know where they are so you can participate if, in them if you, they're near you. It's um, very nice. It's very nice what's going on. It's really nice and I appreciate it very much. But it will not change the reality if there is no practical act action from Biden. Nothing will happen and nothing will be changed if the United States government don't put Israel in the corner and push for a peace between the two nations by having a Palestinian independent state 
beside Israel with Jerusalem as the capital of Palestine. That's it. Yeah. I do, I do want to um, read one more see. comment from Lynn Huber, okay, in, in answer to Mohammed, okay, and to end this on a fairly hopeful note. Um, Lynn Huber says, please send this to Mohammed afterwards, but I'm doing it right now. I hope that's okay, Lynn. You are an incredible gift to me, not just from this amazing film, but from your obvious commitment to remaining free of hatred and interior violence yourself. Those few across traditions and history who, who model this call to me do so likewise, and I pray for that. Some of my heroes in this category are Gandhi and Martin Luther King and Dorothy Day and Desmond Tutu and Nelson Mandela and the Dalai Lama and many more. Thank you for enlarging my pantheon. The reason I wanted to read that to all of you is because despite um, the call for Biden only to respond to this, that, that nothing might happen, is that all of those heroes of Lynn Huber's um, across the ages eventually reached their goal that we do have um, African-American equality somewhat um, in the US. We have the end of racial apartheid um, in South Africa, the situation of, um, of Hindus in, um, in India is much greater due to Gandhi um, and, and also Dorothy Day's work. So, you know, hopefully one day we'll be able to add Mohammed Bakri to that pantheon of people that called for change, for serious change, and it yes. will be accomplished. Nancy, let me- I, uh, promise him, let me... I promise you, I promise you that I will change the world, in my work, in my work. Uh-huh. Um, yeah. Nancy, let me- uh, I promise, I promise you. Um, let, let me uh, just comment on Muhammad's um, uh, call to Biden to, uh, to see the light, so to speak. Um, uh, the only way Biden is going to see the light is if people in this country show him the light. Um, the, the, the events of the last few days have really uh, told, have showed, showed us what Israel is and, uh, and what Israel does. And the time has come for everyone to uh, make a stand uh, and uh, if it, those who support Israel need to understand what they support, they need to know yeah. what it means for them and what that support is. Uh, you don't have to be the one swinging the baton on the people holding the coffin. Uh, you can do that by supporting Israel, uh, supporting Israel blindly. Uh, it, it is very important for people to speak up or they will be counted. Uh, if you support Israel, you support what Israel does, and you are part and you are complicit uh, in the same act that Israel is engaging in. The, the silence has been deafening in the US, and that silence needs to be broken. Uh, and uh, I think we're, we're coming closer to the time where that might happen. Yeah, uh, I think that uh, I have the feeling I have the feeling I'm not an uh, expert of uh, arms or uh, weapons, but unfortunately, the bullet that killed Shirin Abu Akri is American, not Israeli. Made in America. I do want to share. Um... M16, M16 is made in America. M16 uh, is, the, is the national. Uh, gun of Israel is made in America. Stop giving M16 to the Israelis, first of all. Nancy, I wanna share um, um, some two photographs with people. Um, and I, I am a photographer and I like to communicate with photographs. And I'd like to, to see what people's reactions will be to these two photographs. And uh, just give me one second and I will do that. Okay.
any comments from anybody? We're waiting. Me? No, I'm looking for the, the people's comments there. Yeah, I I I did my comment in my film, Jenny Jenny. Yeah. Uh, like I mean, they. It's often said that every major war's end was brought about by one photograph, mm -hmm. and the photograph on the right uh, was the beginning of the end of the Vietnam War. Um, yeah. Let's hope that the photo on the left can be the beginning of the end of the Israeli occupation and the Israeli uh, uh, war against Palestinians. Um, there's no human being that's gonna watch the photo on the left and not have the, the strong emotion that what were they thinking and how could they do this? Uh, the same thing as the world said when they looked at the photograph on the right. I'm not sure who took this photograph or was it part of a video or whatever, but certainly that photograph uh, will, will live forever and it will have a huge impact on what happens next. At least that's my prediction. Okay, we're back. Mm -hmm. Um, I will say we've had more comments um, and questions to this session than we ever have before, um, somewhat over um, 60 and still running. So we do appreciate your interest um, in this matter um, in film and it backs up our mission um, as an arts institution, as the Palestine Museum US um, to show the power of art, um, of film in, in all its forms. And we thank you again for watching, for your interest and for your comments. Thank you, Nancy. And uh, thank you, um, Mr. Bekri, Ustaz Muhammad, shukran. Thank uh, you. As usual, uh, we look forward to seeing you in, again uh, very soon uh, in, in another screening of one of your films that we have accustomed to love. The moment the occupation will stop, I will do only love stories. I promise you. <laughs> Great. I can't wait for both. Yeah. <laughs> the love story and the end of the occupation. Um, the anyway. grandfather is making love stories. <laughs> um, okay, okay. God I, bless you all. Thank you very much. Thank you, all the audience and all the participants. And I hope they, that the day will come, we will not need to make films about wars, just to make films about human beings, and that's it. I'd um, like to thank uh, our audience today. And um, um, I know it's been a difficult time for everyone. And uh, we very much appreciate all the condolences that you've uh, presented. Um, um, that really means a lot to us. And uh, thank you for your sentiments. Uh, we look forward to uh, another film next week. Um, as of now, um, there are a couple of candidate films. Uh, we will announce that uh, in a few days as usual. Uh, and thanks again for everybody who uh, uh, stayed with us till the end here. Um, over, 100, uh, over 120 people. Thank you. Uh, Thank thanks, uh, everyone. And as we say uh, at the end, uh, Ma'as Salaam. Ma'as Salaam.